So being an American comes with a lot of cliches. There's often the cliche that America loves guns. And I will level with you. America really does love its guns. But one thing America loves more than weapons is getting fucking hammered. Americans love to get blackout drunk. And we love to get so fucked up that we have these things called flights because we can't keep all of our beer. We drink so much in America. We can't just keep all our beers on us in just with our arms. We have to have this thing called a flight or a paddle to keep all of our beers because God forbid somebody can't hold all their beers at one time. And an array is essentially a flight, but in the computer form. It's almost like a paddle that holds your beers. Instead of having your beers clanging and just jumping around all over the place and you being hammered and not being able to keep track of them, what an array does is the same thing, but with variables. It puts all your variables in one place so that when you start, you know, you're in your sixth beer for the night and things start getting a little crazy, you have all your variables there and they're not strewn all over your program. And just like the flight, your variables are going to be stored in logical sequence right next to each other in memory. So let's just say that we have a random array that we initialized. You can put variables in it just like you would anything else. And the best part about JavaScript is that you can put anything inside of your arrays. There are no rules. You can put a Boolean, you can put a number, you can put a string, you can even put nulls in empty objects. It is anything goes. And not only on top of that, but JavaScript also gives you plenty of cool little helper methods that we are going to talk about that are going to make your life a lot easier when it comes to actually initializing arrays and actually putting things inside of your arrays and reading data in different ways. So without further ado, let's go ahead and let's jump in and let's actually start coding one in a terminal. Okay, so we are going to practice arrays in the terminal. The terminal is a great place to just get the concept of an array down. We don't need to pull out VS Code for this. This is gonna be uh, very informative, but it's also going to be very simple. So go into your web browser if you haven't already. Go ahead, click inspect, get the Chrome DevTools open. Go ahead to console and we're gonna zoom in here and we're going to go ahead and hop right into the console. So the first thing that you want to do is you just want to initialize an array. There's nothing uh, too complicated about arrays and the way that you initialize them is just like this. And I'm going to create an array with my favorite type of birds in it. And I'm going to put a mockingbird and also put birds that are indigenous to your area because these birds are only going to be the type of birds that I see outside my window. I really don't under I don't understand any other birds that live near you. So like I said, this is going to be lo local. So my favorite birds are going to be a uh, mockingbird, a blue jay and a seahawk. Now you have this array and you need to be able to crud. One of the most important things to be able to do when you are actually learning programming or learning data structures of any time is number one, how do I create the data structure? We just created it. Creating arrays is actually very simple, but the next thing that you're going to have to do is actually add stuff to it. Now we already added a couple birds to our array, obviously, but it's not going to be practical when you're actually programming to be going back every single time and saying, well, I want to add a eagle to my actual array here. So that's not going to be practical and you're going to have to add stuff dynamically. And the way that you do that, well, there's actually a couple ways. This is the most official way to do it is you actually go in here and you go to the whichever place that you want to. So it'd be zero, one, two, three. So let's just say we want to add one, two, three. You would use bracket notation and you would add eagle right here. And when you add eagle, watch what happens. You add the eagle. And when you add the actual eagle using the three, you get the eagle at the end of the array. But like I said, this isn't very practical. This is a indeed a way to actually create a, another bird for your array. But sometimes it's better to know the array methods so that you don't have to actually do this and you just have a nice little neat function in order to add stuff dynamically. And the way that we're gonna do that, we're going to say my favorite birds push and I'm going to add a 
sea eagle. <laughs> I don't think there's any such thing as a sea eagle, but I just made that up. So we're going to add a sea eagle to our favorite birds. And when you add a sea eagle, what's going to happen is you're going to get a number back. And this is the actual new length of the array. And when you add or when you push to it, what's going to happen is, as you can see here, it pushed to the end of the array. And we didn't have to go through and actually count one, two, three and count to the point where we wanted to add it's just going to automatically add it to the end of the array and that's pretty much it. Another really important method that you also want to learn is you also want to add to the beginning of the array. Imagine if you were displaying these birds on your web page and you wanted to add to the beginning of the list. Another really important method that you're going to want to learn is called unshift. Now unshift makes no relation to adding to the beginning of the array. I don't know how unshift translates to add a element to the beginning of the array, but that is the word that JavaScript chose. So we pretty much have to roll with it. And the actual bird that I'm going to add to the beginning of the array is going to be a cardinal, which is a red bird here in North Carolina. So we're gonna go favorite, favorite mockingbirds. And as you can see, we have officially added a cardinal to the beginning. And we've also added our sea eagle with the push to the end of the array. So we've already talked about how to actually create elements in our array, but you may be asking yourself, well, what do we do next? If you ever get confused about what you should be doing in software development, one of the best places to start is to just think CRUD. How can you CRUD an array? How can you create elements, read elements, update elements, and delete elements within your array? And we've already created before. When we were pushing and unshifting, what we were doing is creating, but right now we need to actually read. So let's talk about how to actually read from an array. And the way that you read from an array is very simple. All that you do is you use bracket notation. You can't use dot notation. It's tempting to want to dot into an array and go like that, but the only thing that you can use in order to access an array individually is to use bracket notation. And whenever you use bracket notation, it's just like a string. You can use these brackets to individually reach into your array and grab the elements that you want. And it's very simple to read from an array just like this. Just go one, so then we'll have Mockingbird, and then two, and you have three, and then you have four. And using this, you can access all of your array. But the next part is how do you read all of them at one time? The way that you would read them is to use a for loop, but we haven't talked about for loops yet. So that will be a topic for a future video. Just a little bit of foreshadowing there in case you're wondering, how do you read all of them at one time in case you saw it in a tutorial? That will be in another video coming up, but let's take baby steps. So we've talked about read, but how do you actually update your array? Like, how do you actually update it? How do you actually change places in memory? Well, you are in luck because unlike a string that is immutable, if you try to update a string using bracket notation, it will not work. But if you update an array with actual bracket notation, it will work because it's a reference type. Now you don't need to know exactly what immutability is. Immutability is right now. It's a good thing to know, but just realize that you can actually go into an array unlike a string and go here. And if you want to change the first actual element in your array to, let's just say um, a pigeon. If you want to change the actual first element of the array to a pigeon, you can just reach in and update it with a zero just like that. And if you go my favorite birds, as you can see, the first element has indeed been updated to a pigeon. So we finally gotten to the point where we've created, we've updated. Now we need to worry about the delete part. How do we actually delete from an array? And deleting from an array is going to be very simple. You can go in and I'm sure if you wanted to, you could do something really sketchy. Do not actually do this. You could go uh, zero and you could add a null here and you could update it so that it's null, but you that's not, do not do that. You definitely don't want to do that. What you want to do is you either want to use what's called a pop 
and you can just use pop and that will be the easiest way. All a pop does is pop off the last element at the end. So if you go pop, what happens is that you get a sea eagle back and then if you actually uh, log it to the console, as you can see here, we no longer have a sea eagle at the end of our array and there's nothing there. There's no null and we didn't have to do anything sketchy. But just like creating, maybe we want to also be able to delete from the front of the array. How exactly do we do that? Well, all that we do is we go here and we do a shift and a shift is going to allow us to delete from the front of the array and watch what happens. We press uh, enter and when we actually log it to the console, what we have is no pigeon. The pigeon has been removed from the front of the array. And now all that we have is the original array that we had plus the eagle. Anyways, that's going to be the video for today. That's my video on arrays. That's a very gentle introduction. We're going to start talking more about array methods and those will, and that will allow you to do really insane things with arrays, but this is just a quick, easy introduction. Anyways, hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to smash that like button. Make sure to smash that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.